Let's take a look at a more challenging function to decide whether it is odd or even. So let's review just a little bit just to make sure we remember what it means. So um, the first thing you want to do is if you're deciding analytically is remember what the definitions are. So if we're looking at plugging in negative x for x, so f of negative x, um, if you end up seeing that once you plug everything in and you simplify and it ends up being exactly like the original function, uh, then we have an even function. And if we have a case where we plug in negative x for x, same idea, but we end up doing a little bit of algebraic manipulation and we get the opposite of f of x, then we get f of x is originally, or it is an odd function. So that's going to be kind of what we're looking for as we're walking ourselves through the process. So uh, this is kind of your first uh, formal proof in a sense. If you're trying to decide analytically, you don't want to just say odd, make a guess, or even make a guess, or neither. Uh, you want to actually prove why you are deciding whether it's odd, even, or neither. So the first thing we always do for ourselves is we always start off with plugging in negative x for all the x's that we see. So as we're starting, our first step would be to write f of negative x and understand what that means in function notation. So we're going to take our original function. And everywhere we see an x, we are going to substitute in a negative x. And in the case where you're showing your work, this is very valuable because it allows uh, the instructor to um, a, a award partial credit if there's any. Okay, so let's take the denominator. So we have just substituted in negative x for all of the x's in the rational expression. So the next thing you want to do is see if you can simplify. So some other ideas that we kind of have to go over or maybe we've practiced already is anytime you have a negative number, and we're assuming x is positive at the moment, and it's raised to an odd exponent, what happens is you can get rid of the parentheses and it ends up being the opposite of whatever the x is. Uh, and similarly, um, if you have a negative x or a negative number raised to an even exponent, it ends up being positive. And let me kind of uh, elaborate a little bit. Uh, I want to keep the exponent, so you'll still keep the same number. Uh, so just if you were, we're looking at generics here, but um, if I have something like negative, um, I'll say negative one to the third, that's a little nicer for us to work with. So that's a negative number to the third power. Well, we know that we can actually multiply it out, negative one times negative one times negative one, but the shortcut is to just take the negative one and then it'd be raised to the third. But anytime we raise a number one to the third, we just get the one back. And similarly, if we took negative one squared, that's like rewriting negative one times negative one, but we know that makes a positive number. So you have a positive. So you could do that with all the X's, but if you kind of realize what the patterns are, it takes a little less time. So let's take care of that. Um, let's go and we'll leave the two as is. Um, if you have negative x to the fifth, what you really end up having, negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x, but we really end up 
being able to write it so that we don't have a negative x inside parentheses anymore. It's just simply negative x to the fifth. Um, still have negative four. Uh, negative x to an odd number, negative x to the third. And um, we still have that in the denominator as well. So just trying to understand those exponents. And the positive five. Uh, well, so we say five times negative x. Um, that's not really raised to anything. So we could very well just say it's negative five x. Now this is an extra step. Sometimes um, you can skip straight to this next step. I just wanted to make sure you understood why we're having um, to change the signs for some of these. So if you're going to simplify two times negative x to the fifth, that's negative two x to the fifth. Negative four times negative x cubed is positive four x cubed. Three times negative x cubed is negative three x cubed. And we still have the minus five x. So that is the first idea um, in order for us to decide uh, whether something's even odd or neither. Uh, again, plug in negative x for x and simplify. So we have this statement at the bottom of our page. And the idea is to see if we can compare it back to the original function. So um, I'm gonna erase this in a second, but all I'm doing is taking exactly what I see and I'm gonna compare it back to the expression from the original function. And what you wanna look out for is, is it exactly the same as what you started with? And so um, with these rational functions, sometimes it's not as obvious to us. So all I do is I scan the numerator. All the terms will be the same, except sometimes the signs will change. So if you're kind of looking at this and you're noticing, well, negative 2x to the fifth, um, that's positive 2x to the fifth from the original function. So it looks like the signs in the numerator have changed completely, as did the signs in the denominator. They, they all switched at once. Now, the idea is for us to understand, well, um, right now it doesn't look exactly the same as the original function. Um, we don't want to rule it out yet because when you have rational functions, um, factoring out a negative one from the numerator only, or factoring a negative one out from the denominator only, or taking care of this all at once, factoring a numerator, uh, negative one out from the numerator, factoring a negative one out from the denominator, uh, sometimes you run into cases where you could end up getting the same function back or the opposite of the function. So I like to start slow. Um, it's kind of like a trial and error. Sometimes we don't know what we're going to get. So we're gonna take a little time here. Oops, I forgot, I erased that too. And I'll kind of start off with saying, well, um, maybe I want it to look like the, the f of x to begin with. So the next thing we're gonna do is try to prove this. We're gonna to try to factor out a negative one and try it from one place only and see what happens. So if I factor out a negative one from this numerator, uh, all the negative one does is it kind of changes the signs. So negative two x to the fifth becomes positive two x to the fifth. Positive four x cubed becomes negative four x cubed. And now when you're kind of looking at this numerator that you have right here, um, see if I can highlight it a little bit in teal. Um, you kind of see, oh yeah, it looks to be the same as this numerator. Well, this might lead me to believe, well, this negative one, um, do I have exactly the same denominator from, from um, this new function right here? So I'm gonna check. Uh, let's do some erasing because I don't want to crowd everything. Um, as I'm looking at this denominator uh, from the original function, three x cubed plus five x, and then I look at my computed f of negative x, it appears that the signs are both completely switched. So as I'm playing, I'm kind of noticing, well, the, the, the denominator, even if I had this negative one on the outside, um, it's not going to affect the denominator. So what I'd like to kind of do is play with um, the idea of factoring and maybe a negative one out of the denominator and seeing if that changes anything. 
And there's a few ways we can approach um, having negative ones in um, rational expressions or just having a negative fraction. Um, I'll try to explain that a little bit later. Um, but this is kind of the first thing I always kind of look for. Uh, so I kind of play with the idea of factoring out negative ones. So if I do that in the denominator from my previous expressions, so remember this is our f of, um, f of negative x after we've simplified. Um, we're going to notice that all it does is change the signs um, of the 3x cubed and the 5x. So then what I notice in blue, and I'll write it in teal, the numerator appears to be the same as the f of x. The denominator appears to be the same as the f of x. So all this together in teal, see if I can write another step for you. I'll bring it over here. Um, I'm actually getting the original function back. Did everyone see that? Just double check. Um, see if I can highlight this again. So uh, maybe I'll do it another color. We'll do it in black. So what I have in teal is what the original function was automatically. So now we kind of wonder for ourselves, well, what, what's happening with negative one over negative one? Well, if you divide out, same number divided by the same number, they cancel out. And they divide out, they, they end up disappearing. They actually end up being a number one. But when you get positive one times f of x, you really just get f of x back. So we kind of had to, to look at things. So what we've just shown, um, you've gone from, we've just shown that f of negative x actually ends up being f of x by a little bit of algebraic manipulation. So then if that kind of reminds you of what the function could be, um, it looks like the, the even would be the response to this problem. So if um, f of negative x equals f of x, this means, I'll probably a little therefore, the function is an even function. So um, once we have the fact whether the function's even, odd, or neither, we can then play with the symmetry and say, well, I remember that even functions are symmetric about the y-axis. So the function is even and symmetric about the y-axis. And we're good to go. We've answered the question. So that could be a little tricky at first. Um, sometimes we don't know. Do we, do we factor the negative one out of the, the numerator only? Do, do we always factor it out of both numerator and denominator? Um, you have to practice it enough to kind of get a little bit of experience. And then again, just remember what you're always looking for. You're always looking for if somehow you can get the original function back um, from plugging in negative x for x. And then you're just trying to understand, do you automatically get the original function back or do you get something like the opposite of the original function? So I'll let you kind of think about that a little bit. Sometimes you might want to try this on your own to see if you can do this without me. Um, so you can pause the video or we can move on. And I'm going to kind of show you, we have a similar function, another rational function as well. And we're gonna just take the same process. And we're gonna say, well, um, if I have to decide analytically, the first thing I have to do is compute what is f of negative x. So that's the first step I'll only show. I don't just decide odd, even, neither. I have to show this. So this means everywhere we see x, we are going to plug in a negative x. So we have um, two times negative x to the third power minus five times negative x over four times negative x squared plus nine. Nothing to plug in there. So just kind of reminding you function notation. This is what it means to plug in a negative x everywhere we see the x. 
Now, after you do that, just simplify knowing some of your shortcuts for taking negative numbers to odd powers or negative numbers to even powers. So what I'm seeing right now, um, if I look at two, two is two, but negative x cubed ends up being the opposite of x cubed when you multiply it all out. So you don't really have a negative number taken to a power anymore, you actually have an expression. Um, negative five times negative x, we can do the math right there, that becomes positive five x. Now when we look at the denominator, four is four. Negative x times negative x, so that's a negative number taken to an even power, becomes just a positive x squared. And then we still have a plus nine. So far so good. So all we want to do is simplify a little bit. Uh, two times negative x cubed is negative two x cubed. Still have the five x. Four times x squared is four x squared. And we have plus nine. Now, when I explain things, I always like to show this middle step just in case. Um, sometimes at first, we're not used to this. But as you get better, uh, it is quite OK if you understand that you can get to this third step without having to write everything out. But um, do whatever helps you, because remember, you don't want to lose points for, for things that you, um, what they call kind of minor mistakes. So if you think it's better for you to write it out, might as well. No harm done there. Okay, so are we ready? Let's look at the expression we calculated and compare it back to the original function. Uh, what I'd like to point out um, as I'm scanning, I'm kind of looking at the numerator and I'm noticing the numerator has opposite signs. So I'm talking to myself like, okay. But when I look at the denominator, I notice it's automatically the same. So this would kind of call out to me that like maybe I'm, I'm, my goal is to try to get f of x back. Let me see if I can scroll back. I want to get f of x back in some way. See if I can do that. So if the denominator is already the same, I don't really have to touch the denominator. I'm going to start playing with the numerator. And when I say play, I kind of mean like factoring out a negative one. So let's try that. And if I factor out a negative one from the numerator, all it does is change the signs. So I should have positive 2x cubed and a minus 5x. And I didn't really want to touch the denominator because my goal is to look for f of x if possible. So now as I'm comparing everything back to the original function f of x, I'll look at it one more time. We already said the denominator was exactly the same. And it is, still is, we haven't changed it. Now we actually see the numerator show up in that factorization. So in teal, what I've just done is highlighted what f of x is. So all of that is f of x, so we still have this negative one that's being multiplied. But what's going on is all that teal turned into the original function again. A Little bit of algebraic manipulation. Now remember, if you have negative 1 times f of x, what do you really have is negative f of x. So that's the goal. Try to, try to figure out if you can find f of x. Um, a little bit of algebraic manipulation to get there sometimes, and sometimes it just appears, if you notice maybe in the um, earlier um, examples in this section. So just kind of restate what you, what you found. Um, we just figured out that f of negative x is equal to the opposite of f of x. And if we remember um, what that means in terms of our function, it's going to let us know that f of x is really an odd function. So that was according to our definitions that we restated up here. So anytime you have the opposite of f of x, you got an odd function back. Now, 
whenever I think I'm done, I feel pretty good about proving that it's an odd function. I just want to make sure I, I took care of everything that the directions wanted. Um, the last step after deciding whether the function was odd, even, or neither, we need to state whether the graph is symmetric about the origin, y-axis, or neither. Well, the minute we find out that it's an odd function, um, we're going to notice that it's symmetric about, oops, let's write it in another, I like to kind of try to keep the same color. Um, it's symmetric about the origin. I kind of like it that it matches up a little bit. I, they're both O's, so odd functions symmetric about the origin. It kind of rings in my mind. So notice that this one took a little less um, steps. Uh, sometimes that factoring that negative one out kind of tricks us a little bit, but go ahead and explore that and see if you can do it without me. And remember this whole process, if you're proving it, you remember you have to show these steps to get there. So I'll let you either practice or you can pause and we'll move on to one last example just in case. Um, so that you can take this and compare it back to if you're kind of trying to do the homework. So one more. We are looking at um, the same idea. Remember, it's asking us to decide analytically. So that is kind of a heads up for us to calculate what is f of negative x. And we'll do that. Um, so I'm plugging in negative x for everywhere I see x. And remember, when you plug things in, we're using parentheses. It's helpful. Um, the first one you don't really have to, but in the denominator, we can just go and be consistent. So now let's simplify. Um, we have negative x to an odd number. So that's really the opposite of x to the fifth. We also have uh, two times negative x, so that just becomes negative two x. And this negative x, we really didn't need a parenthesis, but it's really just negative x. We can drop that parenthesis, plus four. Um, simplify a little bit. Um, we should have negative three x to the fifth minus two x over negative x plus four. So we take what we just calculated, that's f of negative x, and we need to compare it back to the original function. Now, right away, when you're glancing, if you're looking at the numerator, does it appear to be exactly the same? And so I kind of look at it and say, well, the terms are always the same. It's the signs that are different. So that's fine. You can kind of say, well, um, I could try. Uh, maybe I can make this happen. Um, if I were to factor out a negative one from the numerator, um, that would leave me with 3x to the fifth plus 2x. And that's great. Yeah, that, that will make it look like the numerator. So they match now having that negative one on the outside. Um, however, I really want to look at the denominator and say, well, um, to start off with, this x plus 4 versus negative x plus 4. They are not automatically the same. So you could play um, and we could say, well, let's try it. We're going to erase the, um, oh, I don't want to erase that. I'll see what happens. Trying to get rid of a little bit of color there. So if you want to try to see how can we get it the same as x plus four, um, the only way you can try is just kind of experiment, factor out a negative one, see what happens. So if you're looking at negative x plus four, uh, when you factor out a negative one, you get x minus four. Now, when you compare again, um, are they the same? And then you can't see me, but I'm shaking my head no. Um, no matter what I do, whether or not I factor out a negative one or not, um, I'm never going to get those denominators to look the same. So I don't have a match. I can't find f of x anywhere in my expression. I got pretty close, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And there's nothing wrong with you if you can't do it because sometimes functions don't end up being um, where you can find what we were looking for. We can't find f of x in this expression no matter how hard we try. 
Um, so this is why it's okay and why we have erasers. Um, all this effort was not, um, I guess it didn't lead us to any conclusions. So you can cross it out or erase it, but you're kind of just stuck with this um, f of negative x part. And when you kind of get into this situation where you're like, well, I can't make it look like f of x, um, and maybe I say it, I should probably be a little more formal. So we can't make f of negative x look um, um, like um, f of x or negative f of x. And if that is the case, we then have a case of a function that is neither even nor odd. So we can state it. It's quite okay if you just want to say neither, uh, but I'll be formal because I'm on camera. So uh, f of x is neither even nor odd. And then if you aren't odd and you're not even, you can't be symmetric about the y-axis or, or the origin, so the symmetry is neither. Um, I'll be a little more formal. So neithers kind of go together. And that's kind of nice. I like it when math is somewhat consistent. Um, if, you're, if you're answering this on a um, test, this is a very nice formal proof. If you're explaining yourself, uh, kind of your first introduction, there's always like a math part uh, where you're kind of using some algebraic calculations. And then after you come up with a result, um, then you're kind of explaining it, explaining it in English, what your conclusion was. So we don't do too many of these in this class, but it's good training for those higher uh, math classes after this. So hope this helps a little bit. I know it takes some time in practice, but you do a little bit more of the homework, I think you're gonna have it. So I'll see you next time.